Your name and straight to the point. Uh, my name is Jaslyn Taylor. Um, from Atlanta, Georgia, United States of America. Oh, my name is Jaslyn Taylor from Atlanta, Georgia, U United States of America. I'm here to testify of the goodness of the Lord from this uh, unction, from this commission. So um, my, story, my testimony goes like this. I discovered Dunamis early 2019. And we, before then, I never followed any, any you know, ministry in Nigeria as I was not brought up like that. Uh, but I discovered this commission, and I started um, following it by uh, April of that year, and I watch follow every services, and I, I reintroduce it to my sisters and my mother. And after that, by September ending of that year, I told my mother, I just have to go to this place because um, the senior pastor and his teachings was just something I've never heard in my entire life. And the church and everything, so I said, I had to go and see this place, what's going on there. So we made a way here, we made our way here, like ending of September of that year. So when we got here, we were able to um, spend two weeks and attended all, service, all services. And then um, we met with a senior pastor, which he prayed for me and my mother. Uh, he prayed for me, I didn't tell him anything to pray for, he just prayed for restoration. And then also blessed the oil that I brought here, I bought, you know, to take back. So when I got back to the States by October that year, I was here on um, the 12 hours in his presence on this October 1st. And there was a, I, I work a job where I travel all over the United States, um, all states, and there was a project I wanted to get on to go to Vancouver, Canada. So while I was here on um, that first uh, of October, a, a colleague wrote me, because Daddy had said, um, people are gonna get instant testimonies. And I was one of them. It was about 12 something in the afternoon. And I got it. She wrote me. She said, do you want to go to Canada? I said, yes. Because, I mean, I wanted that project. So, but I was, I wanted to come out to say the testimony, but it, there were too many people. So I didn't. So that's my first testimony when I came here. So, and after that, I went back, I was able to go to Canada and um, I went to Canada. And then while I was there, I had an encounter in the dream of the night where I saw a senior pastor say to me, uh, he looked like he was doing a crusade. So at the end of it, and I walk up to me, he was walking up to me uh, also. And I said to him, sir, um, my mother and I came to see you that time. My name is, ah, ah, ah. He said, his name is Udo. I said, yeah, 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 that's my name. Because that is for, my name. For time's sake, I'd like to help you out here so we can proceed. With so much excitement and then, uh, as I said, she came, she met her father in the Lord who prayed for her. And eventually she got a job she, she had been expecting at Canada, miraculously. She said, somebody who never helped, that person can never help any person. Called her while she was here. And she got that job, and the Lord moved her from $100,000 per annum to, for eight years, it has been $120,000 per annum. Moved her to $300,000 per annum. Moved her again to $500,000 per annum by one encounter. Please, just listen. And then, her mother got in contact with one so-called prayer woman. She protested. She said, no, mommy, we have met Dr. Pastor Paul Enente. I don't want anything with these small pastors. And this encounter continued. When she eventually, out of boldness, resisted her mother, and they found that that woman was a very, very, she, she was a, a satanist, the woman began to fight her, and she lost everything. Because of that, in anger, she ran back to base where she got her blessing. She came for the convention, and she has been around and the Lord has instant, one of the things the Lord did was that a woman came, comes to fight her every time in the dream. And she, when she entered here, she began to defeat the woman in the dream. And she's here, the same people, from the time she joined Command the Day Midnight Prayer. Now she's here, the same people are calling her back to resume everything has been restored. All she lost. And she's here to say, thank you, Lord. The Lord, a big clap and a lot of shout of praise. That devil is a liar. Beware where and how you connect because what you gain can be lost literally overnight. $500,000 per annum. That is $700 million per annum. That's how much that's Nigerian money. That's how far our money has gone. Get set. God will change your story like that. In Jesus' name. 
is done. Your name? And straight to the testimony. Um, my name is Sadia Igbemisola. Um, in 2019, I visited um, um, this um, um, glory. Um, I, I visited, visited the um, commission for the first time, um, and I attended healing and the deliverance service. Um, earlier before then, I um, got to my primaries in uh, 2014. And before then, I've been writing this um, entrance examination um, to become um, into residency training for over five years. And then I came to this altar in 2019. And to the glory of God, in less than one month, God did it for me. Um, did you get that? Writing an exam for five years. Joined the commission. Within one month, she passed those exams. Um, secondly... Uh, in 2020, um, I, I have had a series of um, gynecological issues uh, um, in, to the extent that my doctor termed me a uh, bad um, obstetric history. I've had a series of miscarriages. I've had a stillbirth. I had uh, um, caesarean myomectomy to deliver my first son. And then afterwards, I, um, I had an ectopic pregnancy. So it was the ectopic that really got, that got, got me, you know, really angry because I, I almost lost my life at that point. So I was scared of getting pregnant again. So I came to this altar and I prayed unto the Lord. I told him to, to, to heal me and then also to give me a bouncing baby girl. And then uh, when I came to the healing and deliverance uh, program that, that year, on that day, the man of God told us to pray for a, a special miracle, something that you will be, it will be so sure that it was God that did it. And on that day, I remember that my sister had similar issues. So I joined the two of us in prayer that day, and I prayed concerning the issue, and I said God should give us baby girls. To the glory of God, 2014, 2020, I gave her to a baby girl, and my sister in Oshogo also gave her to a baby girl on the same day. Praise the Lord. Lastly, two weeks ago, I came to this uh, to, 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 um, um, healing and deliverance uh, meeting here just two weeks ago. And before then, I've been having dreams of um, um, serpents in my dream. I've been seeing snakes everywhere. And it, it, had, it went on for like four months, and I was wondering what, the, what this is. So I, and to the extent I even physically, somebody gave me a present of snakes. So everywhere I was seeing snakes. In a dream, I saw somebody feeding me with snakes. I said, no, this is not good, and it's not right. So on that day, 11th of June, I came, to, I came here again, and then the man of God he, he, um, addressed the issue of serpentine altars, serpentine spirit. And I saw it in that revelation, even while here that day, I saw it being shattered to pieces. And ever since then, to the glory of God, I've never had such dreams, such encounters again in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Sister and brother, Olon Rochemi. Your name is straight to the point. I'm Sister Peace Olon Fremi. I'm here to give thanks to God for what God has done for me. This morning, God used the face of the handmaiden, daughter Becky Eneche, to visit me at home this morning. When she came, she just rushed in at the city room. She was with um, bottles of water and donuts and fruit in her hand. So she just entered and said, where are my children? Then my two girls rushed out. We jumped at her. Then she left. Then this morning again, Immediately I closed my eyes, I saw the same dream. He said, come to the church this morning. Immediately I came, he repeated that same gift and give it back to me again and say, here is your main child you are looking for. Then meanwhile, I have two girls, I am looking for a male child. So I was like, how did mommy know? And then secondly, daddy mentioned at the midnight combined the day's prayer, that one side headache and uh, waist pain. So I was done. One side like this, I really don't understand. As if the hair went to fall down, was really in pain with the waist. Immediately, I encountered that dream and everything went away. I am here to say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. For better understanding, she, when our friend Lord mentioned the issue of the waist pain, 
and one side of the headache in the, at the command of the middle of prayer, that dissipated. But she still had that headache as if her head was going to split into two. Now, this early morning, when, she saw, when the Lord visited her with the face of her mother in the Lord, gave her that bottle of water, the fruit and the donuts. When she woke up from sleep, as if they poured cold water on her head, both the headache and the waist, check back, waist pain checked back to her. And she's here to say, thank you, Lord. And your baby boy has come in Jesus' name. Divine Agusi. Your name is straight to the point for time's sake. Praise the Lord. My name is Divine Agus. 16 years, destiny delayed, restored. I am here to give all the glory to God for restoring my destiny. I have been stagnated for a very long time. I came from a, a polygamous home where my, my mother is the second wife. I, am, I happen to be the last of, among the 10 siblings. And all of them are married, settled, Everything, only me. Then it happened that I started asking God, why am I passing through, through this? Then I came to realize that when I asked the questions, I asked my other ones, and then my mother uh, was already late, so I couldn't ask her anything. Then I asked my siblings, they now told me that uh, something happened when I was giving birth to, that I and my mother, that the uh, enemy wanted to took us. Then our father, then my father, in quest of uh, securing our life and saving our lives, what he did is to consult the altar, the ancestral altar he was worshipping as then. Then, and as, as a result, he now dedicated me to the altar. So since then, I've been suffering all these afflictions for a long time. I say, God, how, what, what can I do to get out of it? And then I've been serving God fervently. To the extent that any job I get, everything will scatter. Any good job will just go. And, and marriage, I got married 2010. 2010, 31st January, the only thing that happened that after seven years, the guy, is, the, the man based in the United States, he just woke up one day, seven years after, and called me and said, the marriage is over. I said, God, why am I passing through this? Then secondly, I went into a ministry. I started serving God fervently more. Then God located Madam, me. Madam, let me do the background series. You now tell us what happened when you located Dunamis, just like two months ago. She said, as a child, she was dedicated to an altar in her place called Ogugu. And from childhood, she was plagued with spirit husbands, near success syndrome, failure at the age of breakthrough. That began to scatter everything that concerns her, like she said, marriage, ministry, finances, and she was living below what you call, she wasn't, there was nothing happening good in her life until you joined Dunamis. Now tell us, when you joined Dunamis, and came to the convention. What happened between that time and now? Okay, I came to August convention. During that uh, convention, host runners convention, because I've been into ministry. The first ministry I started, um, which uh, Bishop Oyedepo, I was among the first female evangelists in 2019. I, I, was, I was sent to Imo State. The, 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 I was released within nine months out of nothing. Then I, I cried my, I cried bitter tears. Then again, I went to another ministry when I came to, when God directed me to Abuja. Then when I Madam, two things are unnecessary. Now, what happened when she attended our convention? The Lord began to visit her. Fire from this altar began to attend to these issues in her background. That spirit husband ran out of her, dissipated by fire. Number two, since she's been here, she has seen her finances restored. And she knows that the Lord has very new thing in her life. And that's why she's here. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Everyone who came in here with any form of spell or curse on your life, I declare them broken right now, and you shall testify. Ifoma. Church, praise the Lord. I'm Sister Ifoma Gloria Wadike. I joined the in 2019. I came here with a load of um, spinal cord, which God delivered me from. Then throughout last year, from January to December, I took ill again. That's, I, don't, I can't walk with this left leg. By December 10th, sanctuary, uh, we are having a love feast at the garden there. That day I came to church, I don't know what happened. I was falling down, dying. Many, many things came upon me. At the time, I took myself, I followed this road. Going out, I saw daddy. I beckoned on that daddy, jumped out of his car and laid hand on me. After then, I married myself, entered that place. As if I want to 
give to go is that, that particular. So when you now got to Oweri and you were admitted to the hospital, for time's sake. I want to bury my mother. Excuse me. You were admitted to the hospital. You began to watch the Common Day Midnight Prayers. What did doctors tell you and what happened? I was having a typhoid, malaria, arthritis, a hypertension, a hepatitis, liver problems, so many things in my body. At the end of it all, with my leg, I, I was using a walking stick. At the end of it all, God of Dynamics delivered me, gave me full heart, everything restored. Today, I can walk with my leg. And as, I join, uh, as I'm uh, joining the commanding the day, my, my younger brother wife joined me. That was March after I uh, came out of hospital. The heart she was having over 20 something years. As she joined me in that commanding the day, the heart went off. He said, Auntie, Auntie, I can feel myself. I can feel myself. I said, that just like she said here. So he said, I should greet daddy, greet mommy for that. And also, I greeted daddy, daddy. God bless you. Liver issues, heart issues of 20 something years departed. And she's here to say, Thank you, Lord. Mrs. Favor. Please, for time's sake, leave the stories. Let's go straight to the point. My name is Mrs. Favor Emeka. So please help me and take. Our sister, after she gave birth to this child, she was afflicted with the issue of barrenness. Like she told us, at the secondary infertility. Like she told us out there. But one visit, one encounter. I, they, they, there are even X-ray reports of the challenges of what they saw in her. But one encounter with the servant of the Lord. The Lord gave her this baby girl and she's here to say thank you, Lord. And she's not taking it for granted. Jude, Ubi. Your name is straight to the point. My name is Ubi Jacob. Since January this year, I've been having this thought. Every time, thought, thought of death, 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 death. Anytime I am in the midst of people, that thought will go away. But once I am alone, I will be having that thought. That thought, imagination, sometimes I will imagine myself dying and being rushed to maybe the mortuary. And like last month, my wife told me that in her dream, she, she dreamed that I died in her dream. And she was crying and crying. And so for, uh, yesterday, during the commanding the day midnight prayer, when daddy was making the declaration, he said that, there is somebody here, you saw yourself with your late uh, dead brother, dead relation, and immediately you made mention of that, I screamed, Amen, because I used to have that fear. Anytime I began to think those thoughts came, I used to have that fear, but since that yesterday, that fear, that imagination left me, I've been very, very free since that yesterday. It was so real that she could feel the presence of the spirit of death and heart palpitation. Now that word, at the mention of that word, that presence left him, heart palpitation died, and fear left. He's here to present to you. You shall fulfill your days in the name of Jesus. You cannot be cut short before your time. Douglas. Straight to the point. My name is Mesurika Douglas. I joined Dynamics two weeks ago. This is my third, third time in service. Before then, I... They said I had blood sugar and high blood pressure, which made my heart fail during December. The, since then, it's been going up and down. But since I joined, and a brother and wife introduced me to midnight prayers, it has, be, it has reduced. Yes, the, the, before I checked last, last month, on the 4th, it was 11.2. But on Sunday, this, this week, I checked again, it has come down to 6.5. Did you get that? For months, had suffered high blood pressure, BP, that nearly led to heart failure. Somebody introduced him to this great assembly. Just how many days ago? Two weeks now. Two weeks now. When she joined the first Sunday. He, he, when he joined, he. When he joined, sir. Thank you, sir. When he joined just two weeks ago, from 18 and above, it crashed to 11. Now it is six and is here to praise the Lord. crashed to 11? The blood, the blood sugar level. That's right. Crashed, sir. Thank you, sir. And the BP has normalized. And he's here to praise the Lord. Give the Lord a big clap. That six is literally almost normal, isn't it? About, uh, normal. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Blood sugar literally returned back to normal. 
Everyone who came in here with an abnormality shall be normalized in Jesus' name. And God gives him a new heart. Amen. Margaret, Oguche. Your name is straight to the point. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Mrs. Margaret Oguche. I come to testify the goodness of God upon my life this morning. I've been suffering from asthma and cough and chest pain for a long time. And this time that I'm feeling breast pain, there's a boy in my breast. I continue to pray. So there's a man of God that he prayed for me and he prophesied to me that. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't talk about that. Just go straight to the point and tell me when you began to join the commanded day midnight prayer with those afflictions, what did God do for you? Okay. They command the day of uh, on 20. So that our daddy prof uh, prophesied to me that, I, that there's somebody here, his name is Margaret. My mother died for cancer, and my mother died in cancer breast. So he said that they, I will not die the way that my mother died. I will not die the way my father died. I will not die the way my brother died. That is on 20, on midnight, he command the day. She knows the date? So, 20th. 20th of, of June, right? of June. Okay, yes. that's right. So, so people can pick that clip. Almost two weeks now, in my sleep, I will dream, bad dream, mingle with the dead people. Whenever I wake up, I wake up with a serious pain and headache. So continue, continue. Even in the night, reach to, to sleep, I'll continue to pray, pray. But now, since that day, why you do that prophet for me, I'll never see that dream again. I'll never mingle with dead people again. And the boil in the breast has dried up, and she's here to thank the Lord. Give the Lord a praise as that prophecy was given to her or done for her according to her word. Her mother died of breast cancer from what she just said. And the prophetic word said that someone by name Margaret, the breast affliction you have is going now. You won't die like your mother died who died of breast cancer. Please can we get that clip so that we can join it together tonight. In the name of Jesus, what killed your mother will not kill you. What is killing people in your family will not kill you. I declare your freedom, your liberty now in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Your name? Praise God. My name is Esther Kingsley. I'm here to return all glory to God for delivering me from demonic affliction. Now, for time's sake, let me take the background story, then you finish it. I hope you don't mind. She said her father has been and is still a member of this great assembly. She lives in Port Harcourt. Like she said, a normal girl running her business, she owns a shop. But she was not connected to the Lord in anywhere at all. So she was just living life anyhow she liked. And she had what she called and what they called their so-called boyfriend. And she went to visit the man. When she left the man's place, she was plagued by insanity. Everything turned around. Within a few months, she lost every money she has made. Job closed. Shop ended. She was literally, she had some of her videos here. She was literally being led like a child. But her father sent the commanded day midnight prayer link to the mother. And they began to watch while she was on medication for insanity and every other ailment in Podakot. Then what happened from that time on? I started responding to treatment. When this thing happened, my mother started praying, taking me to churches and hospitals. I was diagnosed of ulcer and lung and cold in the lungs. But mind you, I was not getting any symptom of ulcer, major symptoms of ulcer actually, and cold in the lungs. But I was already, I was feeling weak. I became scared. They were telling me death, death all the time. I became so scared. I was, I became a shadow of myself. I couldn't even go out on my own for 30 minutes without anybody falling because of the scared of unknown. I kept believing God. I kept following the commanding the day. I then we relocated down to Abuja to stay with my dad finally. Just then, I kept believing in God and trusting God. On the 1st of June, this month, Daddy mentioned and said, I heard the name, Esther, and I said, Esther, and he said, Esther. I was just following him, and he said, be well, be clean, behold. And since that day, I've been following that declaration, all the heart palpitation, all the sensation, I will be feeling sense, uh, dragging on my head. There is nothing I did not see. It's like sometimes I'll be feeling as if I'm losing life, I was going to die. I kept believing in God. I said, this is my word, and God has shown me mercy. I am that girl. God has found mercy on and gave me a second chance to life. I have come to return all the grave because I cannot be ashamed to say this testimony because I yeah. can't, and I'm Thank prepared you. to return all glory Thank to Thank you for God. being bold and not ashamed Amen. to share the testimony. How many of you know the implication of that testimony? Do you know what happened? 
All right, maybe you may not. Some time ago, someone sent us a video clip of um, a young lady, university girl, that um, was picked from the university by a so-called boyfriend in a flashy car and then returned back mad. So it was, we, we heard that it was a new form of, it was very, very ritualist kind of, they, they call it Yahoo Plus or something, where they just said, just take their destiny in, in, in immoral relationship, they then impact them with madness and then, and then divert their destiny for financial, whatever purpose. As they were talking, that picture came to my mind. How many of you saw, you say, oh, 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 Ara. Huh? It was very, very rampant. Campuses, uh, the, that particular clip, I saw it from somewhere in the east. It was very, very rampant. That's, that looks like what she had. Came out of boyfriend's house and then mad straight. Everything dried up. Beloved brothers and sisters, not all that glitters is gold. In the name that is above every name, nobody will use your destiny. And of course, iniquity is platform for calamity. Is platform for calamity. Calamity is easy with iniquity. Uh, where your defenses will be, will be strong, they are eroded. They are eroded. Can you pray against such an attack now? Because of what preceded it. It takes the mercy of God. So don't forget, iniquity is invitation for calamity. I pray today in the name of Jesus, help from above, mercy from above, grace from above, be released for you. And whatever they took from you, it is, it is return back to sender. I want to appreciate you, Esther, for boldly sharing the testimony. Because some will be so ashamed and say, no. but you see, but whatever you do to save other people's lives is worth it. Please bear that in mind and I declare freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord the praise. Ajibola, Mr. Ajibola. Amen. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. I'm Ajibola Comfort. I have come to return all the glory to the King of kings and the Lord of all for healing me last week in healing and deliverance service. I came here battered, beaten, and shattered, afflicted with something I cannot explain. I sat somewhere at the back there. It was the battle in the spirit. When God's servant declared the, the first prophetic uh, prayer, he said, receive, I, I receive. The second one, he, he said, we should shout for mercy. Immediately, I shout for mercy. I was able to stand. The strength come back to me. Before then, three weeks, three weeks ago, I was not down. Me and my husband were discussing. All of a sudden, I find myself in another realm. And he rushed me to hospital. Since then, it has not been the same with me. And uh, a sister in the church here, he asked me, how long uh, have I hooked on to commanding the day midnight prayer? I say it's been a while. That was on the 15th of uh, uh, June. He said I should try and hook on, and I should put the communion, as God's servant is praying, the following day I should bat with the communion. So I, I hook on, I was trying to hook on to the life. I don't even know what I got was on the 13th of June. That 13th of June, I was listening as the life uh, commanded the day. Night. Can I help here so that we can get yes. understanding? Yes. She said the day the axe started to hook was 15th. So on the 16th, she hooked, expecting to hook onto the 16th June prayers. But without knowing that the Lord had directed her path miraculously to the 13th of June, that was where her word was. And what was the word? So the 13th of June, towards the end of the program, God's servant was declaring, he said, that cutting wedding ring and sudden disappearing of wedding ring, wherever it is in the coven, he said he see it reappear again. And that was my story. 
In February, before that, my husband's wedding ring caught it three times. I went to Use Market to seal it. In February, the, the three wedding ring caught suddenly, three times. Three times. Three times. Yes, sir. The, the February, the, the wedding ring suddenly disappeared as we went to buy chicken in Gariki, Lagos Street. What are you telling me? So. <laughs> It's a serious matter. She's not laughing at all. That is, as the wedding ring was cutting and they were, they were resisting the cut, it disappeared, Gabadaya, when they went to buy chicken at, at the Garuki market. So, since then, I lost my peace. Things will no longer be the same with me. I've been battered with depression and all effort I tell my husband that that ring will be replaced. He doesn't give me the answer that plead me, uh, pleases me. But that on Tuesday, when I, I sat there, God's servant declared to shout for mercy, the devil was showing me many things that I cannot be set free from the depression and whatever thing, I cannot raise my hand up. If you know what I was facing, only me and God know. He was pointing things to me. And I tell the devil that before I come, I was reading the book of John. And Jesus healed all that was oppressed in the temple. And even if my sin cannot qualify me for this healing, God's servant have shouted for mercy. And I received the healing. I said, those people that Jesus healed did not know Jesus. They let us discover him after the healing. And immediately... Strength restored to me. I stand up, I dare the devil. You can't go me down again. I attempted committed suicide. I buy sniper to drink it at the middle of the night. My husband hold me to see how it is. And that day, as I raised my hand up, I was uh, walking from back to the front. I decide to pray my God in my language. I said, Jehovah, he go, oh, for a to Now, madam, for time's sake, wait. Wait a while. God's servant. Just wait a while. God's servant. Don't get too excited, so for time's sake. Now, in summary of this testimony, I asked her, I said, why did you suddenly go into depression? Did your husband maltreat you? Was he beating you? Was he not providing for you? She said, no. The man was doing everything to make her happy. But spiritually, there was this heaviness on her. And after that declaration at the command day midnight prayer, she said peace was suddenly restored. The heaviness left. And the husband that had refused to buy another wedding ring, the following day, went back, went back to the market and bought another wedding ring. And she's had her peace. She said she's requesting that her father and the Lord will just lay hand on the wedding ring. So there will be restoration. And she's come to say, praise God. It is well with you. Give the Lord a praise. Why should the wedding You, you ring... didn't compose yourself to sing that song well. This song. Sing it. Jehovah, <laughs> God is good. God is good. <laughs> Jehovah, he go. In the name of Jesus, this wedding ring is blessed. Heavens are open. Your marriage is blessed. The agenda of the enemy will never prosper anymore. The attack of hell is gone. In Jesus' precious name, you are free and you are preserved. Your marriage is preserved. Your destiny is preserved. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Your name, Give sister? Praise. My name is... Straight to the point. My name is Amina Ademu. I have been battling with a spirit husband from my childhood. They wouldn't let me rest. They molest me. They impersonate me. They manipulate me. I've, I've been suffering from their hands. So there is this particular demon that is using my late mother's face to manipulate me. She was so much attached to me. She wouldn't let me be. If anything is coming, they will divert it, they will fight me. So I kept suffering like that till June 13. I, I went to daddy's place, but before that in the dream, the spirit husband was pursuing me, trying to collect the money in my hand, 200, and I refused. 
I was wearing clothes like a mad person. I was like a mad person. I was shouting for help. Nobody could hear me. So I now told the spirit husband, I'm going to report you to my daddy. So I went to daddy's place. I, and that was in the dream? In the dream. I told daddy, then mommy appeared. Mommy heard me and took me to her office and asked me again. I told her that his spirit husband, she wrote it down like a special case. She wanted to treat it like a special case. Then I woke up. So I kept my finger crossed. I was waiting for the result till, till 22 on Saturday, 22nd. I ran out of data, but sleep because the was getting too much. I couldn't close my eyes. Even when I ran out of data, God showed me and my sister was washing it. And me, I couldn't sleep. I was telling God that you promised me that it is done when I met you, when I was complaining. You signed off my affliction. Is this demon not part of this uh, victory? But because I confirmed he restored my glory and my victory. I kept talking till four o'clock. Meanwhile, daddy was there mentioning my name and my case. But before he mentioned my name, he mentioned Monica. He mentioned Amina. Any diabolic manipulation against you, right now I set their altar on fire. So my sister called me after first service and sent me the video, video clip evidence is in the media room. Amina Just a moment, what's you, happening? is set on fire. Yes. So to clear the freedom, on Monday yesterday I was sleeping. This woman that was so much attached to me that I believe her that she's my mother. God disgraced her yesterday. God intentionally made her molest me so that I could disgrace her. She molested me. I fought. I beat her up. She was like vegetable because their altar has been consumed already. I beat her up. Somebody that I was afraid of her in the dream. I pushed her to a room. She was even ashamed of herself. And I said, Mama, every time, Mama, Mama, where they rape. Come try him again. So that was the confirmation. And the video clip is here. My name is Amina. So I'm free. I'm very free. I have suffered. I'm very happy. It's Molesting deep. spirit mother, mm. spirit wife. Spirit mother. Spirit mother. That's a clip, sir. Spirit mother, incestors, husband mother. Lesb lesbian, lesbian mother. Please play the video, sir. I don't know if these two people are related, but I declare today witchcraft manipulation, ma diabolic manipulation. I take authority over which witchcraft acti activity in the life of Monica. I take authority over which activity in the life of Amina. I don't know if these two people are related, but I declare to the witchcraft manipulation, ma diabolic manipulation, wherever they took your name to, I declare those altars are set on fire. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over which witchcraft acti activity. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. The altar was set on fire and that devil could not operate as usual. In the name of Jesus, every altar fighting your life and destiny, they are set on fire today. Shout the loudest, amen. Let's give Jesus a big clap and a shout of praise for those amazing testimonies. Oh, 